my name is Ian Brooksbank, I'm the manager here at the Bradford Depot. I first started at British Wool uh, as a temporary employee in 1990, so I've been here for 33 years working my way up from temporary employee through the trainee gradership, being a grader, the head grader and now the manager. British Wool handles some 23 million kilos of wool across eight depots. The three big main depots are here in Bradford, there's one in Scotland, Selkirk, and then there's one in Wales, Newtown. I'm just going to show you around and some of the processes that we follow. When the wool is sheared, it goes straight into these wool sheets here. So this is what's delivered straight to the farmers and then delivered straight to us, straight from the farm. And across 23 million kilos of wool, that equates to around about 350,000 wool sheets run across the eight depots in the network. So next we move on to the grading process, which is an extremely crucial part of what British will do here for the farmers. Each grader that you can see down there will grade around about 6,000 kilos of wool, which is six tonnes, every single day. Out of the four and a half million kilos that this depot processes, a fleece could weigh two to two and a half kilos, and every single fleece is graded by hand. So we grade over a hundred different grades here at British Wool. We don't necessarily grade to breed. So there's over 66 pure breeds of sheep here in Great Britain. We narrow that down into six basic types of wool, which every breed would fall under. The six basic types of wool are fine wool, medium wool, cross wool, luster wool, hill wool, and mountain wool. So all breeds would fall under one of those six types. My name is Richard Alderson and I'm Head of Wool Sales here at British Wool. I'm in charge of running the auctions and dealing with the buyers who buy our wool in bulk through uh, the auction system. In front of me are the six categories of wool that our fleece grades go into. The fine is generally used, uh, the use which is shorter tends to go into mattresses, beddings, duvets, pillows etc. The hog wool which is slightly finer and longer will go into knitwear on the medium tends to go into again apparel, upholstery, uh, some of the finer wool again will go into the knitwear. The mule, mainly used into carpets, there are finer uh, areas in the UK and that can go again into knitwear. The luster, our smallest category, tends to be mainly blue faced Leicester which is the finest UK wool, that tends to go into fine knitwear but we also have Teeswater and other speciality fibres. The hill, predominantly carpet wool, hard wearing, can contain the odd kemp but overall nice wool. And then the mountain which covers the Blackface, Welsh and Swaledale breeds. Again is a carpet wool well known for its hard wearing. So this is where the grading happens across these grading stations. We have some 41 wool graders within the British Wool Network and that includes the trainees of which Amy is one. Each grade of wool has a three digit number. That number, the starting digit on that number would indicate which of those six categories that the wool fell into. For instance, if it's a fine wool, we'll start with a two. Medium wool, we'll start with a three. Cross wool, we'll start with a four. Luster wool, we'll start with a five. Hill wool, we'll start with a six. And mountain wool, well that starts with a seven. So once we know which category that the wool falls under, there's three overriding factors which can greatly affect the end user. So the first one being the grey fibres that run through the wool because the grey fibres won't dye the same shade as the white fibres. So by separating these, we're giving that perfect ingredient to the buyer so he can make his perfect blend. A second overriding factor is this matting of the wool. It's called cotty. You can't break the wool. So that has to go through a separate process where it will be broke up by a machine. But that again does not affect the fibre or the quality of the fibre in any way. But it can affect the uniformity of the fibre because once you're in for a shredder, you've got all different lengths and sizes of the fibre. A third overriding factor is this yellowing of the wool. Now with this being against the skin of the animal, and this is what you're seeing on the outside, and this is what we call a staple length. So this is a staple length, and this is the base of the staple, whereas this is a tip and what you find on a naturally discoloured fleece is a build-up of sweat, grease, oils that form into a little ball 
and what that does is it catches a bacteria called swint and that make, causes the yellowing of the wool which can rise up the length of the staple. So once you've discounted the overriding factors you would want to know whether a fleece is a hog or a weather. So a hog is the first ever shear of the animal, then a weather is a second and subsequent shears after that. The reason why we want to find these reasons out is because when a lamb's born in March, it's not shorn the following June, it's usually the June after that. Whereas a weather, because it's the second and subsequent shears, it's June to June. What that makes is the staple length is obviously longer and also within the hog staple because you will still find a certain amount of lamb's wool within the fibre and that makes the micron much finer. So then the last real part to the process is to find out whether a fleece is what you call a number one or a number two. A number one fleece would be a fleece what wool grader says is in uniform. So what you're looking for are the staple lengths and widths to be quite uniformed in length and width across the whole across the whole fleece. So a number two staple would be a weak staple, and a weak staple comes from the animal having some sort of stress at some point in the growing process of the fleece. It may be that the animal's been ill, it may be that uh, it was lambing time, it may be that an animal's got in and scared it, but what that does is it makes a weak point within some part of the staple. The density of the fibres will become a lot less at cert one certain point, and you can quite easily see a weak spot where the, where the staple will just break. British Wool initiated the traceability scheme this year uh, following strong demand from consumers and manufacturers. Uh, we can trace the wool all the way from receipt all the way through to packing. Following grading it is put into its individual grades and each ticket has a unique QR code that is fixed to that member and once that member's wool goes to the press it's scanned once more and we know which wool from which farms are in which bales. So we can give the consumer, so retailer, detailed information of which farm the wool in their products has come from. This is what a finished bale looks like after grading. Uh, they weigh approximately 350 kilos uh, and the average UK fleece weight is about two and a half kilos per fleece. Yeah, once a bale has been packed, they're brought into this area where they're put into lots for building. Uh, we tend to pack lots into three separate weights, two and a half tons, four and a half tons and eight and a half tons. Uh, we use these weights as these are divisible into 24 tons, which is the weight you can get in a 40 foot shipping container or a 40 foot articulated lorry. Once the stock lot has achieved its required weight, before we can offer it for sale, each bale in each lot needs to be cored. The coring machine produces samples such as this which are then sent off to an IWTO approved lab in Wales for tests such as micron, VM, colour and yield. <laughs> 